If you've been following this course, you will know how to create rooms and how to use them to make a map. All the lessons can be found in the playlist under this video. I've shown examples in both Java and C Sharp, and while I will continue to show examples in Java, from now on I'll give the most detailed explanations in C Sharp. That's because it's just too complicated to show every example in two languages. But remember that the techniques I show can be used in any mainstream language. If you want an in-depth guide to writing adventure games specifically in Java, I have a complete book on that subject, which will take you from beginner steps right through to quite a complicated game. And if you're eager to write a C-sharp adventure game, I also have a book on that subject. You don't need to buy either of those books to follow this course, but if you do, you'll be helping to support my YouTube channel, and naturally I'd be very grateful. I'm Hugh, this is another lesson in my course on adventure game programming. Today we'll consider the problem of moving the player around the world of the game. In order to move the player around the map, I need to have a player object, which means I need to have a class to represent the player. I've decided to call that class actor. In principle, an actor object could be any character capable of interacting with the world of the game. That could be handy later on if I want to create characters that live inside the game. But for now, I just want to let the game player move from room to room. The actor class has one unique property, a location. That is, the room object in which the player is currently located. I explained properties in an earlier lesson in this course. The actor class descends from a thing class. I've decided that every object in my game, whether it be an actor, a room, or later on, treasures, will have a name and a description. I don't want to keep repeating name and description fields in every class. So I've created the thing class, which is the base class for all my game objects. A thing has a name and a description. Other classes inherit those. I've had to add all the arguments to the constructor method of the actor class. I call this constructor when I create a new actor object. The constructor method passes the first two arguments, the name and the description, to its base class, that's the thing. Then it initializes its location field, that's the room object here. When the game starts, I create the player object and pass room zero to its constructor. So the player's starting location is room zero, that is, the troll room. The game understands one-letter commands to move north, south, west or east. When one of these commands is entered, the pass command method uses this switch case statement and calls a method called move player, passing to that method the value of the n, s, w or e properties of the player's location. Location is a room object. The n S, W and D properties are integers. They are assigned when I initialize the rooms up here. Minus one means there is no exit in that direction. So here, for example, room zero, the troll room, has no exit to the north, but it has an exit to room two in the south. The integer is an index into the map, which is an array of room objects. At index two is room two, that's the cave. So the troll room's southern exit leads to the cave. Now let's assume that the player is in room zero and enters S to try to move to the south. This case statement executes. The value of room zero's S property is two, so this passes two as an argument to move player. Now let's see what that does. The move player new pos parameter is assigned the value passed. Here that was two. First, it checks if new pos is minus one, which indicates no exit, in which case it displays this message. Otherwise, it indexes into the map array, here that's index two, and gets a room object, which, as I said, is here room two, that's the cave. And it assigns that room to the player's location property, so the player's location, which was room zero, is now room two. And if I enter the command look, the name and description of room 2 are shown. So, that's a very simple way of moving a player around a map. Now, you need to have followed the previous lessons in this course to understand how I created room objects and added them to an array to create the map. 
and you also need to understand C-sharp properties and how I parse user input. Even so, there's quite a lot going on in this code, and if you want to be able to write your own game, it may be helpful if I go through the code in a bit more detail. I'll do that in the next lesson. To get a notification whenever I add a new lesson, be sure to subscribe to the Code with Hugh channel and click the bell.